G'day guys, how are you? In today's video I'm going to show you how you can um, connect and access database to Visual Studio. Um, now I know there's probably like thousands of tutorials out there on how to particularly do this. Um, however, there was a guy on Stack Overflow who seemed to be having a little bit of trouble. Um, although his code was nice and clean and stuff, uh, he, he did it the long way and like why take the stairs when there's an elevator next to it sort of thing. So I mean it, it makes for good practice but um, this is just a much easier way how to do it so let's get into it so the first thing I guess we can probably do is we can get a new project here um, we'll just go to classic desktop windows I'm just gonna call it um, let's just call it customers I suppose customers data we'll just call it that um, I didn't actually think what am I going to do for my table, but customers data seems good. So we will do something like address phone numbers and things like that. Um, so just let it create the project. Okay, so there we have it. Um, now I'm going to also show you that if I get a connection problem, how we can fix that issue. So uh, another thing now that I can do now that I have this open is I'm just going to go to my access right here. And I'm just going to go to blank database. And we can just call it database one, it doesn't really matter. You can call it if you like, really. Um, so here's our database. Um, now, for those of you that know how to use Access, brilliant. If you don't know how to use it, don't stress. Um, we won't need too much to sort of get it working with Visual Studio. So let's let's jump right into it. So the very first thing you want to do is right click on this table one and go to, I think it's Design View, and I want you to save the table. So we can just call it Customers Information. We'll just call it that. I won't call it Customers Data, just in case there's some sort of confliction um, with our Visual Studio. So we now have customers data. Now the way this works is it's going to have an auto number for ID. Um, think of it in this way, our customer has a unique ID number, one number per customer. So for example, if you have two customers with the customer ID 2, um, the system's not going to know well, which one is it. It cannot be like that. So um, this is where you get your index, yes, not duplicate. So if you want, you can definitely type in your customers ID and that will automatically generate a number now if you didn't want it to automatically generate a number I would suggest just doing numbers um, but it can't be duplicate and it must be required so you have to remember that because each customer must have a customer number even if it's like a sales um, like say for example if you were doing like a post system and it was just someone that walked you off the street you're not going to say hey what are your details please don't put them to our computer um, no, you're going to have like a sales would be customer one, and that would be for the general public. Um, so description, we won't worry about that. So what I can do now is I'm just going to write customers, and now what you want to do for good practice is do an underscore here, and then just type in name, and this you do that. Believe me, it, it's really good. Um, now a customer could have like you're not the only John out there, so there could be there's obviously means of Johns, um, billions. For that matter um, so it doesn't matter if there's duplicates here because obviously there can be more than one John so customers last uh, last name I'll do it like that you could put an underscore there but yeah and you don't have to keep writing customers I'm just doing it just to show you guys so customers uh, address and we can write here customers phone okay so that'll do now obviously you're probably thinking hey why not do that I know exactly what you're thinking sure let's do it and there we have it so there's a the number so this means that only numbers can be typed into here um, of course you could make some sort of code in Visual Studio how to tell it hey only do numbers if it's something else then you know blah 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 um, but let's just do it here from the get go um, you can have tick boxes in Visual Studio. Uh, I found that it didn't work too well, but that was in 2013. Whether in 2015 they have fixed an issue there, I'm not too sure. But for the tutorial, um, I'm just going to do this. So just have a play around with it, to be honest. So there we have it. We've now saved it. That's our key, which means that it's, it's going to automatically generate a number. And the default value is 1. Hopefully it grows not negative 1, but plus 1. Uh, if not, have a play around with it and, and fix it. Uh, you could create a query I'm not going to get into that um, but anyways let's um, so now let's go to save and 
just double click here and there we have it so this is the start of it now you're probably looking at these underscores thinking you know why um, you'll see in a minute why so yeah so just save that um, I'm gonna save as um, it's in documents so I'll just save it save as what's this I'm um, no, save database as yes save as uh, use. You can't save it if it's closed, and we'll just save it to the desktop, and we'll just call it, yeah, database one, save, done, great, fantastic. Okay, so now what you can do is you can close out of access, there's no need for it anymore at this stage. Um, so now what I can do is I can go to project, and I can go to add new data source, and this is when some people have issues now, I cannot remember if I've added a data source since owning this computer, um, which is why I went ahead and downloaded the compatibility pack to show you guys uh, the error that some people get when it, it can't find the string. So, yeah, let's go to data set and um, collect, uh, select a new connection. And we want to just say that we're doing access and yeah, whatever, and continue. And where are we going to get this um, file from? We're getting it from our desktop, so just there. And press open, and you can test the connection. Aha, awesome. So I have the error here that a lot of people are getting, hey, it's not recognized. So if I press OK, it, it's, it's getting this unrecognized you know, format. So how we can solve this problem is cancel out of that, cancel out of that. Um, uh, what do we do next? We're going to go to the desktop and install the Access Database Engine. So click Yes. Uh, I will close out of Visual Studio just for now. Yeah, sure, I'll save and we'll accept these terms and conditions. Once again, if my resolution is up Sheet Creek, using an old monitor, there's nothing wrong with my laptop screen, people keep emailing me. It's just the fact that I like old monitors and I just like the bulky ass brick. I mean, it's 11 years old and it cost me like 20 bucks, which is probably too expensive, but as they say, Buddha So, let's let it install. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, I can remember it didn't take too long when I first installed it, but like that was over a year ago when I did it on my old work computer and on my home computer. But I've since then I've I've purchased a new computer and I yeah I just uh, it's something I don't use all the time. Uh, I would probably use SQL to be honest, but um on my school but uh, my SQL. But um for those that are just starting out, you know this is a great way a great place to start. So I'm just going to go into into here and we're preparing okay cool so now we're back here so now let's try it again so simply yep add new why is my mouse flipping like that I don't know and we'll go to new connection access database file continue um, let's select where it was from, or ours is from the desktop. If I now test the connection, there we go. Test connection succeeded. So press OK. If you've got a password for your database, you chuck it in for all, by all means. Um, so that's where our source is. So, yep, I'm just going to click next. Um, now, what's this? Do you want copy? No, we'll just leave it at the desktop. So, what that's saying is, do you want to make a copy of this into the like the bin file pretty much? We'll just say no, just leave it as is. And um, double click both of these. Oh, sorry, tick both of these like tables. So, table and views. You probably don't need views, but better to have it not needed than not needed and have it. So, yes, click finish. And there we have it. So it's now there, it's configured. So I'm going to go to full screen mode and I'm going to go to data sources. And there we have it. We have our customer's information. Now, if I go here to the drop down box, we have details, we have customer grid view. Um, customer grid view basically it's, it's like a grid, like an Excel spreadsheet. So if I click and drag it to the forum, um, and there, we there we have it. I click and drag it there it's gonna bring up these kind of um these like binding sources and stuff you must leave these here they're a pain in the neck to get back then and do it manually uh, also don't delete this draft of that i would recommend like hiding it but do not delete it because it will delete from here and it's just a pain in the ass to get back you'd have to sort of redo it again so a reason why you'd use grid um say if you had a stock keeping program and well this is the perfect way to have a grid 
Um, we can delete the grid though, we don't want that. Um, but say for customers' details, I mean, on a grid it doesn't look the best, I mean, it should be private. So we can go here and select details and just simply drag them across like that and there we have a text box with the details. Now notice the underscores are not there. Um, that's why I did underscores is because, yeah, it's just because. The honest question is just because. Now this, um, this toolbar here doesn't look very nice. I mean, it, it's kind of hideous to be honest. Um, so we can definitely make buttons in like, so we don't have to have these. So for example, now if I go to button and I shall make it new. So when they click new, it'll save it and new and it'll go to the next record. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to go back to full screen mode just because, just call it save. This tour has gone for a bit long, so I'm not going to get into changing the text or making it look pretty as such. Um, you've got this stuff here, just leave it. So this is loading the data from that. Um, that's the save item button there, which we, we can use these details, I suppose. So, um, yeah, we can tell it that uh, just quickly. I mean, um, me that save, and now I think it's something like um, I haven't done this in a long time, but. Uh, actually, a way we can get the code is if I click on the double plus here. Uh, no, I didn't do it. Uh, let me think. I think this is new, so hang on. Um, me dot. What's my table? Uh, customer information, perhaps. Customer information phone dot. No, it's not the other. Like, that's completely wrong. Yes. Dot. Add new item, perhaps. Um, move next. Uh, I haven't done this in a very long time, so just bear with me. It's on the binding of that. Does remember that much? So customer dot binding source. Perhaps I need to do this one. Okay, so it's going to add a new one, and then, yeah, so that's, that's what I was looking for, sorry. Um, customers, information, bonus source, add new. So that's going to save it. Um, we can definitely put a try thing there. So what I mean by try is we can try something. So try this. If it don't work, message box will show. Um, perhaps they haven't put in an ID number. So we could just say, please enter a customer ID number to continue. Of course you can put the X message there and it'll probably give you something but it mightn't be as user friendly as what I'm telling it here. So let's just start a program and see what happens. Um, I'm not <laughs> just sure if it's going to work um, but it should. Fingers crossed eh? So here's our database as such. You can definitely hide that there's no need for it. But, um, so customer one, customer name, just say Andrew, last name, Beverly, customer's address. Um, you know what, in Turkey I don't even know what my address is, but I'll just put one, two, three, um, Main Street. Of course it's not that in Turkey. Customer's telephone number, just like that. Um, and we can press save and we'll go to the next one. So if I, um, if I do customer two because it has to be two. Um, obviously you can create a career that does this automatically. Um, uh, James, James um, Pitt, that's a friend of mine. His address, he lives in Shuka. And his phone number, I've got if I know. And um, save, so we'll go to the next one. Now if I go back, um, we should be able to see some, uh, it doesn't create news. Okay, so what that means is because I'd already gone to the next um, thing I didn't put a number there I couldn't go back so if I now press F5 we have these details here so uh, one of two I didn't create a blank one but you see what I mean the details are there now so okay so we got that error just then so what I can do obviously is I can create a try card a try sorry and we could get rid of that error so for example if I was to get a button just like this and I can obviously I could call it next I can call it um, I'll just say before, I guess, I'm 
probably should have said previous, but anyways. Um, I can tell it to try, and we can say, what was it, customer information binding source. Is it get previous, or um, move last? So it moves to the last item in the list. No, we don't want to do that. Move previous. There we have it, so it'll move to the previous. If not, um, I guess we'll just send message box to show and we can just put the dx.message and there we have it. So, here's our database. If I try and move to the previous one, um, it's not really giving me an error as such. Um, but let's just click save and next and we can just say three. And I'll put my details in. I didn't do this properly from before, so let's just do it now. Customer's address, 123 um, Main Street, Spot Street, customer's phone number, everyone has the same phone number. If I click save, okay, cool. Now if I go to before, it says right here, see now it's brought up this error, column, customer's ID is not allowed to have nuance, which means like it's not allowed to have not a number. So if I go here four, then I've given it a number that's above the last one, I can now go back. And if I had a next button, then I could obviously go forward and do that here. Now, like I was saying, if you don't want to have this like toolbar there, the best way to solve this problem, um, it's not really solving the problem, but the best way to get rid of this is just to hide it. If you delete it, it like you might need it for some reason, and it's it's just really really like it's a pain in the neck to get back. You just sort of have to remake a connection. So visible false it gets rid of it um, just like that um, you can use a uh, system report which um system file report. report viewer sorry you can use a report viewer all the data not that one this one and uh, i believe it's it, you can bind them together actually i think there's a binding thing choose the report that you want um you can go on there and obviously find the url and stuff and, it's good fun. It makes for good practice. And um, yeah, what else can you do? You can make a search button. This could be our next button. Obviously, you can scale this a lot better. Oh, that's a good thing probably to show. Um, now, if I go to the desktop and go to my database, if I double click on it, it should have James's details in there. So let's double click, and there we have it. So James is customer three. I must have been mistaken customer one. I don't know. Um, oh wait, it failed. That's right. When I went to save and knew it, and then I went out, but it failed. So, anyways, two, three, and there's obviously zero because it doesn't have one as of yet. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how you can do that. Um, if you like this video, please comment and subscribe for more of them, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.